Hi guys, my name is Doug. Welcome to My Massey Garage. In today's, today's video, we're going to be mounting a Skidoo link mount axe holder that's designed for the Gen 4 chassis on the Rev XU chassis uh, 2019 Expedition. A few videos ago, we put this heavy duty rear bumper on uh, this machine, and unfortunately, we had to remove the axe mount. In today's video, we're going to reinstall it. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you stopping by. Hope you enjoy this one. This is the axe that we're going to be mounting on the side of the tunnel. We're using the link style axe mount. This is actually designed for a, a Gen 4 chassis, but it's a fairly universal design, so we can mount it on any snow machine. The owner of this snow machine actually has one mounted on a Bearcat. Works pretty well. It's much easier to do this when uh, it's mounted to a snow machine. But this unlatches like that, and you're left with the conventional link mount. This mount is designed to be uh, self-tap screwed from the back side. Putting screws in from the back and threads into the plastic holds it to the side of the tunnel. However, um, because we have the heavy duty bumper on this machine, we can't really come at it from the back side. It doesn't, uh, doesn't conveniently work. What we're going to do instead is we're going to drill these plastic holes out a little bit so that we can put a 832 machine screw them. We've got some stainless hardware here that we're going to use and we're going to mount a riv nut in the aluminum extrusion of the bumper. This is a riv nut. Essentially what it is is a small steel barrel that's threaded on the center and it works kind of like a conventional pop rivet in that you uh, pull and this part compresses up. You've got knurling here that's designed to grab onto the mounting uh, flange and uh, as this pulls up it squashes grabs nice and tight and then as you can see the center is instead of being a uh, metal pin that is designed to snap off it is a, uh, a threaded hole this is the tool for pulling it and it works similar to a, a two-handed rivet puller however you can see instead of having something that's going to grip the stem of a rivet we've got a uh, a threaded pin that comes out. Now because of course we're dealing with different sized threads we have different sized bits that need to go in the end of the tool. This is the uh, the bit that we're going to need. The kit came with I don't know 10 or so different bits. Unfortunately the size that we needed didn't come with the kit. Uh, 832. I ordered this in separately from Amazon tried it in the uh, in the tool and it does fit. The way you change these out is there's a collar here that needs to get backed out. We extend the uh, the puller a little bit. There's a sleeve that has to be slid down here and we have the pin threads in. This is, I'm not sure what size, I'm going to say that's M6 thereabouts. And that fits in its own little case. In our tube, we have the 832 mandrel and the cap that goes on. So we pull back our sleeve. And the, the, uh, the purpose of the sleeve is that it has a hex uh, at the bottom, a part of the rivet puller, and it engages with the hex that's on the uh, the mandrel. So rather than having to tighten this down all the way so that friction can hold it in place, the sleeve just locks across the, uh, the hexes and now we have that main set up in there. Put our cap down in place and there is our... So we're going to waste one here with the uh, to do the adjustment of the tool. To adjust the tool, you've got threads, you've got a, a knob back here, you've got a lock collar, this piece. All of this adjusts how hard you can pull on the, uh, the riv nut. We've started pulling on that a little bit and you can see we pull it and these knurls would grab nicely on whatever we were trying to attach it to and we're left with a nice threaded boss. 
that we unscrew from the uh, rivet machine and we're ready to start again. So let me get set up here. We'll start laying out the screw holes and uh, we'll put some rivet nuts in. We've got a couple pieces of tape here that are approximately where we want the ax to mount. We've got our two mounts are going to go something like that. We want this as far forward as we can get it. Unfortunately, when we put the heavy duty bumper on, this bolt here kind of creates a bit of a, uh, an interference issue that actually uh, the original holes that we're holding this ax mount on were just in front of this bolt and we don't have enough room to do that. Now we can extract our link mounts off of the ax. We don't really need to have the whole entire ax to work with. And what we're going to do is we're going to locate these on the tape. We'll get the front one done first and then we'll verify our uh, location for the back. Take a Sharpie marker and just kind of mark the perimeter. The way we are going to transfer these holes over, it's the same method that we used when we marked the tunnel for putting the bolts in for the bumper, is we're going to use a transfer punch. And this is about the uh, perfect size transfer punch. Unfortunately, it doesn't go through the pre-threaded holes on the, uh, the link connector. What we're going to do is we're going to take a drill bit and run them through these uh, holes, open them up so that the transfer punch fits in there almost perfect. Once we get everything all sorted out, we might come along with the next size bigger drill bit and just open these up so that the uh, number eight screw machine screw goes through there with no problem. As you can see, we're not taking much material out of these holes. Now the transfer punch is nice and snug in the, uh, in the hole. We've got the, uh, the bracket approximately where we want it. Transfer punch, if you haven't watched the uh, video where we installed this bumper, essentially a transfer punch is a parallel sided punch instead of a tapered one that's got a sharp point on it. They come in different sizes and essentially you match the size of the uh, transfer punch up to the size of the hole that you're using. And then when you give it a tap, it marks the center of that hole. Now one issue that we've noticed here is that the, uh, the holes are gonna be fairly close to this kind of rib affair in the middle and uh, that may cause some interference issues with the uh, the riv nut but i don't think it's going to be that big of an issue uh, we're going to start off with drilling the same drill bit we used to open up the holes just because i prefer to drill with a smaller drill bit uh, initially and then we'll uh, run it out to its final size and we're going to start off drilling uh, we're going to get this one mounted and then we can put a screw into it, get it straight, and drill the other three holes after that. And I believe this is a uh, 17 64th drill bit, which lines up very nicely with the size of the rib nut that we're using. And we'll peel a little bit of the tape back on this corner because uh, we don't want it under the head of the rib nut. I can see there's no burr there. We've screwed the rib nut onto the end of the tool. We push it into the hole nice and flush and we give it a little bit of a squeeze. We don't want to go too far. And then we unscrew the mandrel. We're left with a nice threaded bolt hole with a, uh, with a steel insert. One issue that you want to keep in mind when you're using rivet nuts is you want to have a relatively substantial uh, base that you're putting it onto. If you are onto too thin of a sheet metal, yes, they'll work, but they also have a tendency to, uh, to spin if you over tighten them. And not something we need to worry about in this situation, but the rivet nut is not exactly the perfect solution to uh, everyone's problem. We've got our, uh, our first rivet in and we put this bracket on. And one of the reasons that I want to do this is it allows us to uh, temporarily install the axe so we can see that everything is going to line up the way we want it to. We take our axe with the second holder in place. We snap it into the link mount, get everything lined up 
essentially where we want it. And now I want to mark with the Sharpie marker on the tape at the back so that I know where to put the, uh, put the second bracket. Center it across that rib so that both the upper and the lower bolt line up. Now that we've got everything kind of located, what I'm going to do is put these other three uh, rib nuts in place and we can get this front bracket completely mounted. And I will put one in the, uh, the back bracket and uh, then we can verify that we've got everything located where we want it there. We'll take our transfer punch, shove it in the hole, give it a little tap. Now this is where it starts to get critical that we don't move things around. That gives us our location for the other three holes. Since you've already seen me do that, stop recording here for a minute and I'll bring you back when I have the rest of these rib nuts installed. We've got our four rib nuts installed and we're gonna try and bolt this up. One, uh, one thing to keep in mind here is that uh, it is possible that we have just a very slight little bit of misalignment in the, uh, in the bolt holes. And as you can see, this hole, although I've drilled it out, is still a little tight on the, uh, the number eight screw. And that could cause us some uh, challenges when it comes to bolting all of this up. But there's absolutely nothing saying that we can't take and run the next size bigger drill bit through those holes just to clean them up make uh, so that we've got a little bit of slack to work with but by using the transfer punch to uh, to locate the rivnuts nuts like we did i'm hoping that we won't have any issues and those two bolts line up beautifully number three and let's see how number four did number four falls right into the rivnut. nut and that attaches our front link mount. Well, not specifically necessary. Uh, this is just kind of a sanity check, make sure that we don't have any interference issues. Everything looks good. We'll take the ax mount back off. And we'll repeat a little process with the, uh, with the rear mount. I'll bring you guys back when uh, I get the rest of these holes mounted. You've already seen me do it once and uh, I'll show you the finished product. There we go, we got two link brackets mounted on the side of the uh, bumper using riv nuts. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to put the axe on one handed, so let me uh, mount that back up and uh, I'll bring you guys back when I have it. There we go, we have the axe all mounted up, nice and solid, not going to fall off the machine, and it's nicely uh, tucked in behind the front of the machine, so this shouldn't get hung up on anything when you're uh, driving through the backcountry and you don't have to worry about the axe falling off. Anyways, this was a uh, fairly quick little project. Appreciate you stopping by to check it out. If you've gotten this far in the video, remember to uh, throw me a like and uh, leave me a comment. And if you're new to the channel, appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button, maybe ring that bell icon so you get notified when there's uh, new videos uploaded. And uh, thanks for checking things out. On to the next mess.